Bubbly Steve is available for pre-order at shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. You've got less than a month to pre-order this 15-inch plushie. Check them out. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we have a really interesting update on Katakawa Publishing. A manga publisher Katakawa has announced that they will be doing a simul pub of English manga. This comes a week or so after there was some controversy. Uh, their president came out and said that you know maybe we need to self censor our content to get into uh, Apple and Google apps and. Japan didn't like it. The Japanese didn't like it. In fact, uh, he had to apologize profusely and he's giving some of his salary back because the company's like, you're going to cost us money by saying that we're going to censor our content. This is a really interesting development because I think we're going to see more and more of this. I think we're going to see a lot of Japanese studios and publishers releasing their content to the West directly, direct to consumer, because where the uh, critical point of failure seems to be with with this uh, material making it overseas intact is with a lot of the western translation teams western publishers deciding that they want to insert current year western politics into uh, manga publishing into anime dubs uh, you know or just not bringing stuff out at all because they're like it's too dicey for the west um, but if consumers want it and the demand is there even if it's not for you they should be allowed to to sell it, right? So we're going to talk about that. I have to give a hat tip to Black Sage D. I'm going to bring up one of his tweets here too. Uh, talk about some of his tweets. Uh, very interesting development. I, you know, I've been speculating that this is probably going to happen. A lot of people have. Um, that this needs to happen. That the only way the Japanese are going to be able to circumvent Western censorship is to circumvent the West entirely or at least companies that are trying to censor their content and just be like we're just going to release direct to consumer we have the means to do it so why why would you why would you use western publishers if you can go direct to consumer not only have complete control over what the consumer receives but also get to keep all the money for yourself you know and there was a time decades ago when it was absolutely necessary to have uh, companies in the West sort of go to bat for you. But now everything is sort of reverting back to the uh, the four kids method, isn't it? Uh, uh, we're taking properties and we're altering them. I mean, look at what Seven Seas did, you know, with the one light novel. They, they, you know, butchered it so badly. They edited so much content out of it that they had to republish the entire book and give consumers a reprint because they decided to take it upon themselves to censor the content and people aren't stupid. This isn't, you know, 1995 where it was hard to find out that the content you were getting was, was watered down. And we used to, you know, this happened to us in the eighties and nineties. If you were an anime fan, you were a, a Japanese video game fan. You, you would find out years after the fact, in many cases that the version of the game or, or manga or uh, anime you were watching was heavily, heavily edited or that there were sequels that never came out or whatever because of, uh, Western sensibilities. And we kind of gotten beyond that, right? For a good number of years. Now there does seem to be a, a huge call to edit this content once again. Again, not every anime or manga is for every person. Some of the stuff I think is pretty extreme. It's not stuff I would watch or read, uh, but I can't say that it shouldn't exist. And once you start censoring content like that and telling people they're not even allowed to produce this content or sell this content, then you open up Pandora's box, and we've already seen this happen with Amazon. Amazon sell, or you know, they banned uh, action figures of Hatsune Miku, fully clothed, virtual character, right? But because she's 16 years old, they were banning action figure sales of her. Absolutely ridiculous. And we've seen Australia go nuts, uh, banning light novels and manga. Again, it is a slippery slope, and really, you know, it does feel on some level, like a lot of this is going on because the companies that are controlling uh, this content, these Western companies want to replace some Japanese content with their own content. I mean, look at what Crunchyroll was doing with the originals. 
you know, they were taking money that a lot of people thought was going to, uh, you know, Japanese animation studios, and they were funneling it into Western productions like High Guardian Spice. Again, I'm not slamming High Guardian Spice per se. It would be cute for a Cartoon Network show, but it wasn't what people wanted. It wasn't what they were expecting. And uh, we're going to see more and more of this. In fact, we had the head of Crunchyroll come out and say that, you know, Japanese anime studios, well, they really need some direction as to what the West wants. No, uh, no, it's a handful of people in Hollywood and New York and Portland and places like that that are trying to tell or, or spin a story to Japan that this is what the audiences want. But at the end of the day, it, it needs to be about the money. It needs to be about the sales. You know, if there's nobody getting in the way, what sells? So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 229,000 subs. Uh, thank you for the support. Um, just a reminder, Bubbly Steve is going to be uh, leaving in about two weeks. So you got two weeks to order pre-order a Bubbly Steve. He should be here in December, uh, barring any unforeseen shipping uh, catastrophes. That's why we're trying to do the pre-orders early. Hopefully he'll get here in time for the holidays. Uh, but again, we're living in a COVID world, so who the hell knows? Uh, we do talk about anime. We talk about manga, talk about uh, animation, pop culture, comic books, whatever interests us that day. We've been following the situation with uh, manga and censorship. And uh, again, this is really interesting. Katakawa announces Simulpub of English manga. Again, this is like a week after their president had to apologize and give back part of his salary for making pro-censorship comments. It seems like they're going to try to make sure that the, uh, the material gets to the West uh, as intact as possible. So coming from comic book resources, uh, Katakawa announces that several of its light novel manga series will now be published in English simultaneously with their release in Japan. They're doing it themselves. Uh, Katakawa, the publishing company behind such titles as Konosuba and Sergeant Frog, will now release several of its manga and light novel series in English on the same day that those books and chapters are released in Japan. The Japanese publisher announced its new initiative during the company's panel at the yearly Crunchyroll Expo, which is being held online this year due to COVID. Katakawa is one of Japan's largest publishing companies with over 5,000 releases a year. A year. 5,000 releases a year. That is a lot of comics. Katakawa publishes the manga magazines Young Ace and Shonen Ace, which have serialized series such as The Disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan, Eureka 7, Deadman Wonderland, and Sergeant Frog. Additionally, the company is one of the largest publishers of light novels and has published works such as High School DXD. Previously, the company has licensed its titles out to outlets such as Yen Press, which owe, uh, it owes a majority owns a majority stake, owns, owns a majority stake, and other, I didn't know that, actually. Uh, that's news to me. I did not know that they owned uh, Yen Press, which it owns a majority stake in and other localization and distribution companies, but for its new simulpub releases, Katakawa will handle the localization themselves. This is very important because this is happening after, uh, well, this, a analog. You know, the, the, Series that aren't tied up with places like, you know, Crunchyroll and Funimation and Netflix and whatever. A lot of anime series that haven't found a home elsewhere are being released to YouTube directly. Directly by the Japanese studios. They got together. We've got Nippon. We've got uh, Toei. Uh, there's some other ones here. And they're releasing content themselves to this YouTube channel. They are testing the waters to see if they can do it without the West getting involved. And now it's it's nice enough to get the West involved when you, you're dealing with uh, you know Netflix and the, the money that they have. But there have been complaints that studios like Netflix are not paying in a timely fashion, that they're trying to impose their own, you know, uh, political ideals, their own ideology onto Japanese productions. You know, they're like, well, it's a co-production, so you're going to do what we say. We're kicking in some money, whatever. And this conversation is happening almost weekly at this point. Like, there's all kinds of news out there about uh, creatives in Japan getting tired of censorship, getting tired of political correctness. Look at, look at the debacle with Digimon. 
10, 15 years ago, that Digimon uh, fan sub wouldn't have been controversial at all. They were poking fun at, this was at uh, a convention. It was the, uh, the voice actors, a cast of Digimon, uh, talking about how political correctness had become the, the big bad, the new enemy. And, you know, it's becoming increasingly clear that Japan is getting sick of the West's bullshit. They like the money, okay. But now that manga and anime is becoming this much, much bigger deal, like, all the balls are in their court at this point. They don't need the West. We're living in a global economy right now. They don't need companies to localize and bring Japanese content over here anymore. You don't need a four kids anymore. You know, you don't need these, these dub companies anymore. You really don't. Japan can do it all themselves. And people would be happy to give Japanese studios the money directly if they get unedited, unaltered content, you know, and that's, that's what's happening. I think they're starting to wake up that the only way that they're going to be able to bring their stuff over here and get it to Western consumers who are very, very hungry for Japanese content is to do it themselves. And there's no reason why they can't 10, 15 years ago. It was a little harder. Not now. Uh, so Katakawa's simul pub project will begin with the following titles, the insipid princes furtive grab for the throne. I like that title. A boy raised by gods will be the strongest. I like that one too. The length of lead title. Wait, there's a length of lead. The length of lead title. My little sister stole my fiance. The strongest dragon favors me and plans to take over the kingdom. Question mark. The 31st consort. The Lotus Eaters. Drunk and sober. Magic stone gourmet. Eating magical power made me the strongest. Now is the time for Cake Bitch. We need to bring Cake Bitch out. Everybody's into this, this magical eating thing. We need to bring Cake Bitch out. Katakawa decided to translate and deliver our works by itself, said Satoru Miki, Katakawa's manager of global business during the panel. We will aim for simultaneous distribution at the same time as Japan. We will start with the published editions, but we will move on to simulpub of serialized chapters soon. Uh, he stated that while Katakawa is primarily pushing simultaneous publication, both Japanese and English, as a way to satisfy fans, the project is also being done to deter piracy. At the same time, the English, in the English-speaking world, there are many pirated editions that generate no return for the authors and artists. This is very true. Um, very true, because they're very slow to translate this stuff. So I'd like you to support the creators by purchasing the regular edition. Uh, so this starts in October. Piracy is part of it. But I really do think the bigger issue is that the West is meddling with Japanese content. They're censoring Japanese content. Um, you know, Black Sage D, again, he's been talking about, he, he retweeted this. You know, you wonder why people are cheering the fact that Katakawa are doing internal translations of their manga now. So this is, uh, this is uh, Square, right? Look at, here's what the Japanese version says. Is curry made by me, a Japanese, not an Indian, authentic? This is how they translated it. Can I even call this curry, or is it just cultural appropriation? There was someone who said that they saw some shady guy. Someone said he saw someone acting sus. Well, okay, that, I'll, I'll give him that one. That's, that's not that bad. Might be related to Neku. Might be an imposter, but it might be Neku. Uh, yeah, lowest of the low, the height of human trash indeed. What she said, you're sick. Uh, we Alestra forum goers have a name for people like you, a top tier troll. I'll strike back. And now with my edgy wrath. <laughs> now, I, you know, I can't, I can't complain too much because I like the Lunar Games. Um, I like the Lunar Games quite a bit. And Working Designs took a lot of liberties with the translations. You know, but they were very fun back in the day. So, but the thing is, is the difference back then, it was about punching up the dialogue to make it funny, you know, and, and it was a different time, you know, for Western audiences. Now, though, you start to see this undercurrent of, you know, let's inject our political stuff into the translations. And this is happening more and more. And again, when you see a company like Seven Seas, you know, cut out entire chapters of, of light novels because they don't want to offend anyone and people catch on. They do. Yeah. You know, they're going to catch on. It's it, again, this isn't 1995. You can't, you can't fool people. They know they're getting in many cases, a subpar product. They know that 
uh, Western localizers in many cases, not always, but in many cases, uh, do have ulterior motives for choosing the language that they choose, you know. But here we go. This is the actual panel. Uh, this is from uh, Crunchyroll Expo. There are many untranslated manga and light novels. Uh, I think it would be a good move to localize more titles for the English market. Katakawa decided to translate and deliver our works by itself. First with digital, via digital platforms, uh, et cetera. And this, you know, this could lead into that conversation that the, the president had about the apps. You know, they're like, well, we're going to do it ourselves, but we might have to rein it in a little bit. But, uh, you know, he got a lot of, he got a lot, a lot, a lot of pushback for that. Uh, I don't think he's going to make that mistake again. And I think they do realize that people want authentic translations. Now, you know, it, it is what it is. So um, I think we're going to see more of this. I think we're going to see the Japanese create their own, uh, you know, infrastructure to get their content to Western audiences, English speaking audiences, without a third party, you know, American company getting involved. They don't need them anymore. Uh, we really, d we don't. I mean, again, 15, 20 years ago, yeah, you know, you, you did need somebody to kind of go to bat for you, but not anymore. I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.